Hello and welcome to another episode of Test This Week, and I'm your host Rajesh Dev. Today I've got somebody who is a great friend. I have known him for quite some time. He is a great speaker at conferences. Chooses some of the most uh, critical, compelling issues, compelling topics to talk about. He is one of the coolest uh, guys that I know about in the test automation arena. He is uh, very knowledgeable. Very hospitable, always uh, talking with a smile, always ready to answer your questions. Um, and I, I can go on with the list of good qualities that I see in this person. So it gives me immense pleasure in welcoming to the show Abhijit Vaikar. Welcome, Abhijit. Hello, Rajesh. Thanks for inviting me over here. Well, it is uh, entirely my pleasure. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Uh, things are going well now uh, in Singapore over here as compared to what it was before, uh, at least, you know, in terms of COVID situation. As far as Corona is concerned. Uh, sorry, can you repeat your question? As far as Corona is concerned, do you see something like a second wave or something like that coming in in Singapore or uh, it's, it's it's okay? Uh, I think at least right now, based on the news that have been coming out, uh, things seem to be cooling down now and uh, there hasn't been any information so far on a second wave coming. But probably it will happen once, you know, um, international travel gets enabled uh, to and fro Singapore that probably could introduce some more uh, cases over here. Well, uh, yeah, so uh, something happened recently here in Europe when the borders were open for summer vacations. Mm -hmm. And uh, people could not hold themselves from going on a vacation for the for a year. Yeah. I mean, at least this year they should have held themselves back, but people just did not do it. And uh, a lot of people went to to hotspots like you know Spain and uh, Italy and uh, France and other areas which were the previous hotspots. And yeah. now almost all countries in Europe are seeing a second wave. Uh, mm -hmm. Netherlands not being an exception. So even the, the prime minister has issued a strict advisory because uh, the number of cases is rapidly rising again. But I think they should be able to control it. But we'll have to see what happens. So I mean, this is this is a tough call for governments. Uh, let's hope that things calm down and uh, you know things get better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you so much for joining in uh, uh, this uh, session. Um, I'm going to uh, ask you about a few things, uh, but before that, I want to know uh, how did you get involved with testing? Was it your first choice or, uh, or or something else? How did you get started? Okay, uh, so to be honest, it was not my first choice. Uh, when I passed out of my college, so I did my bachelor's in computer science from Wadia College in Pune. And uh, after that, I did my master's in computer management uh, from the same college. Uh, and then I started looking for uh, jobs and my primary focus or my primary goal was to get into development. Uh, on, on the side, I was also actually doing some courses related to testing uh, that time because I had done some internships uh, in, a, uh, in some companies related to uh, testing. So when I got a interview call for a developer position in a startup company, I uh, did that interview. And after that, I uh, kind of was also asked if I'm interested in getting into test automation uh, alternatively. So actually that was something which I decided that, okay, we can try this out. And uh, that's actually how I got into uh, testing. So, yeah. Well, that's that's quite interesting uh, that, you know, somebody uh, wants to be a developer and then gets uh, an opportunity to work in test automation. Well, that's, uh, you know, something really nice. So if, if not that, then this uh, <laughs> kind of a situation. But, uh, you know, both have their own uh, perks. Both have them, their own perils. I mean, you talk about development, you talk about test automation. Um, but, but, you know, uh, uh, 
desktop automation has its own place. Uh, you know, it is for uh, helping you get better at testing. Basically, that's that's my understanding. You can help me correct my understanding, and yeah. uh, and and I think you you made a good choice to move into something like test automation because. Yeah. Of, uh, I mean, <laughs> there's absolutely been no regrets at all because when I look back, when I look back at my journey, right, I see that I probably made a much more larger impact uh, to the organizations that I worked with earlier by being a tester rather than uh, being a developer i'm not i'm not trying to you know uh, put the developer position down but uh, i ended up being i ended up uh, making an impact on much more larger uh, areas of software engineering in those organizations rather than you know uh, working on developing features for a product or an application right so since i was involved in the entire spectrum of testing i was able to put my opinions, I was able to advocate on what and how quality should be across the entire uh, uh, software delivery life cycle in every organization that I worked on. So that was definitely a plus for me. And uh, I feel that I definitely made a good choice uh, in the first, uh, in my first job. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, you know, Abhijit, this is, this is one of the things that that I was hoping to hear from you because uh, I remember, uh, you know, in one of our first, very first chats that we had, in fact, it was at GTR when I met you in Pune uh, in 2017 and we were talking about, you know, testing and subjects like this. And you had mentioned the same point to me there as well. So I thought I, I, I'll just go and ask you this again so that the larger community gets to see this perspective and uh, helps a, you know understanding the fact that what you do should actually create an impact and that that that, that particular statement that you made that you are as uh, being in test automation you are able to contribute and without demeaning development of course you are trying to contribute in a manner where you are giving great value addition to the product to the organization I think that is something all testers must realize that they are doing in their way, you know, in whatever they are doing, whether they are they are into automation or, or they are not into automation, it doesn't matter. For a tester to realize uh, their potential, for a tester to realize their value addition, for a tester to realize their their impact to the to the to the product that they are working on, to the company that they are working for, to the larger society. I think it's very important and you made a very good point and uh, this is something that I was hoping that that you would uh, share again. So thank you so much for doing that because it it, it clearly reminds me of, of our 2017 conversation that we had and, and there was another point that we had discussed. I do not know if you recall or not. We had spoken about the role of of you know testers who are not inclined to do automation. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there, 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 there are some people who, who are like, okay, automation is not my cup of tea, kind of. You know, so, so, so what are your thoughts on, 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 on that? Do you think it's, it's, it's something that is helping us, or do you think there needs to be a mindset change, or, or what? Uh, I think there are a couple of uh, things to this point, actually. So, one is your personal inclination or your personal uh, capabilities. Right. Uh, the other one is uh, trying to adapt yourself to the changing or the rapidly changing uh, picture in the software industry. Right. So uh, there was one. Um, I remember Anand Bagmar had published one blog, um, which was talking about you know career paths for uh, people in software testing. Yeah. And that was yes. a really insightful, uh, that was some really insightful information that he shared with the community. So what I feel is that if someone is in, not inclined or someone is not interested in, uh, you know, getting into test automation, uh, then there are definitely alternative choices for them. Yes. Like, for example, uh, I know a lot of uh, people in testing who have uh, chosen a path for themselves which uh, ultimately lead to a position like you know a business analyst or a product owner uh, yes. or a product manager in that case 
I have also known a couple of uh, testers who have been on the extreme side of the spectrum as well, where they actually wanted to move from testing to development completely. So, and they have done that successfully. So, I think it's ultimately uh, what ultimately our own alignment or uh, our liking, what we really want to do. But if let's say, um, like for example, I started off, I started off with uh, you know very basics and fundamentals of testing when I um, started my career, and that time, although I had programming background and uh, some development experience from the internships that I did before, uh, I had to do a lot of upscaling, uh, upscaling, and you know, um, basically trying to work on a lot of things to equip myself to be better uh, keep better skilled and capable enough to contribute to test automation so that is that was something which i felt that okay no um, i have an interest in uh, test automation as well so i better you know start working on things that is going to help me uh, become a better uh, tester so yeah i mean ultimately i would say it depends upon uh, the person uh, yeah, I, I completely agree with you on that, and 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 I think your last line uh, made it very clear. I mean, mm-hmm. it is depending on the person, on the choices that that we make on this, on on what we value most. I think those are the things that 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 matter a lot. So yeah, so uh, that's I mean th- for the audience, that's how uh, you know our conversations began in 2017 when when we both spoke for the first time. Apart from that, I have. I have known him for for a period a little longer than that. As we were preparing for for GTR, and I started reading the the abstract that that Abhijit had submitted. Uh, those days, I used to be one of the uh, so-called judges for reading and and giving our uh, verdict on abstract whether they should be selected or not. And I looked at it and I said to my co-judges that this is. This one has surely got to be there. We are not evaluating this further. <laughs> so, so the decision was made right there, and we did not have a second look on, on that one. And uh, so th- that's that's how I got uh, into you know knowing about you. And then uh, you know, uh, obviously you were there on LinkedIn responding to posts, responding to uh, you know comments, uh, posting your own work, your showcasing your own body of work. You know thought process and uh, and what I found is something in, in in particular and that is something that I really admire about you as a tester is uh, the, the the ability to bring in that a distinct clarity of thought. That, okay, you know what? Yes, we all need testing. You need the fundamentals. You use the word. In your previous response, you need the fundamentals to be very clear, and then on top of it, if you add programming skills and other skills, for example, if you have an inclination towards performance or security, if you get into that, if you add it on top of the fundamentals, you have a very clear path. And this is something that that you know people who would who would read your your post and your comments would also realize. And that is something that I realized very early, and and and. And I must congratulate you for for having that clarity in thought, and for helping educate a lot of fellow testers. And uh, you know, when we speak within the community, I speak to other testers and all that. Uh, sometimes, a lot of times, your name pops up in the conversations, and and uh, and this is what we talk about. That you know, this guy is somebody who who needs to be looked at. His his work needs to be looked at. So we'll we'll come to that part a little later because I have. A couple of questions regarding your your body of work. So, what I wanted to hear from you now, you you've seen, uh, I must say, over over the course of your 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 career journey so far, you've seen um, a lot of misconceptions building in in the testing community. A lot of misconceptions. Uh, I do not know if you have seen any misconceptions being uprooted entirely. You've seen testing evolve basically. So, so according to you, what are the top three misconceptions that the testing uh, fraternity is dealing with? 
Did I, I put you on the spot? Did I put you on the spot with this question? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, I think one of the most uh, widely discussed misconceptions uh, in testing is that test automation solves all the testing problems. That is uh, one of the uh, yes. misconceptions that I am aware of uh, being still happening in the industry. Uh, there are definitely a lot of people who are actually um, trying to, you know, uh, bring in awareness uh, towards this misconception and uh, trying to, you know, make the community, testing community and testing industry uh, realize that hey, test, test automation is not the silver bullet for testing at all. That is one of the misconceptions. Uh, the other misconception, I think, with regards to testing, um, is regarding the uh, ownership of testing, like uh, yes. because I've seen I've seen at a lot of different places that uh, testers are expected to be owning the end-to-end -end quality uh, delivery. So that is another misconception that I feel uh, is there, and. Uh, Apart from that, maybe um, yeah, another one. So, uh, which this is something which I uh, strongly feel about, uh, and I really want, like everyone who's watching this, I really want them to understand that when we talk about automation or when we talk about testing, right? UI is not everything. So uh i don't know why but we as the testing community uh, focus a lot on like when it comes to testing it we come we focus a lot on ui even yes. when it comes to automation we focus a lot on ui yes. so this is this is a misconception or a mindset i feel that we should come out of because there are a lot of problems which need to be solved when it comes to testing uh, products uh beyond the ui like we should look beyond testing only from the um from the user interface or you know writing automated tests only for the ui like right that is something which i strongly feel about and is one of the you know misconceptions that okay so automation okay i'm going to automate the ui no that's not the only thing that you can automate that's not the only area that you can test or you should test there are there are a lot of different layers in the entire uh, product architecture that you should also be looking for. So I think these are some of the. I mean, there are definitely a lot of a lot more misconceptions that are there in the testing um, space. But I guess these are the ones which I. So the top three would be uh, first being uh, you know automation being a silver bullet. Yeah. yeah. The one you said the ownership of quality yes this and, one and, and the third and, and, sorry go ahead yeah and the third one is basically that uh, how we treat uh, testing as basically and, and, so and, this is something which, so, something which so, i think uh, this is something which i think is upon upon us to you know um, make everyone aware in the testing community that do not do not do not be too obsessed with the UI. Look beyond look beyond user interface when it comes to testing. Yeah. So you know what? <laughs> I, I, I am laughing because uh, I had specific questions on on all three of these elements. I do not know if you read my mind or something when I when I asked you that question. And these are the three things that you you, you mentioned here. Okay. I had very specific questions on the three. Since you have mentioned all the three, I will anyways go ahead and ask. Okay, so the number one uh, misconception that you spoke about. Okay, uh, automation being a silver bullet. Now, this uh, mostly comes from senior management. Okay, people with a very uh, shallow understanding of, of of testing. You know, not not so much from within the testing community, but you know, on top people who are sitting or taking decisions about 
about automation and, and these tool vendors when they go to them you automate and things will be cool and they'll be fast and then they get uh, you know mesmerized with the fancy presentations and the numbers and the roi numbers roi going through the roof and all that and then say hey automate everything <laughs> and that's 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 how it begins so how do you think this problem can be solved how can we tackle this problem uh, one of the uh, quickest way that i feel i don't know like something which is like you do not need a lot of effort and uh, you know, do not do not need to sweat out too much on is basically like you just have conversations and communication. Like if 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 the if the problem is that um, leadership or senior management are are basically coming from a background where they want uh, where they where they only focus on test automation efforts, then the first approach. I mean, one thing which I would definitely do is you know have conversations with them. And uh, also, also uh, probably involve them in certain uh, discussions that happen around in the you know testing community, like basically making, uh, trying to make a case and trying to you know make them understand that uh, yeah, definitely automation is going to help us because you know uh, coming back to the same thing like you know. Uh, you cannot you cannot execute all the test cases and uh, manually because it's going to be time consuming there's going to be cost and effort involved more resources etc uh, but apart from apart from test automation we should also have significant effort involved in making sure that we perform the other types of testing like exploratory testing and also yes. uh, cross cross collaboration with different teams and so on so these are the things that i think ma mainly having communication and uh, trying to you know bring in some use cases or bring in some proven um, approaches from the other uh, companies or other uh, experts in the testing community that would definitely help i feel that is that is so true uh, Vijit. Uh, thank you for highlighting that and in fact, I would just like to add something to, to what you just mentioned. Uh, what I also notice or what has come in my experience is uh, one of the predominant biases when we talk about cognitive biases, uh, one of the predominant biases that people have is the bandwagon bias where, you know, one person does something and the rest follow. Okay. Without actually understanding what it is. So automation may have given results to somebody may have you know uh, had a lot of value have may have given good roi mm -hmm. and somebody was really successful and for for others to just assume and just follow that okay without analyzing their own situation without looking at their own context uh, that is somewhere things just just fall apart that is yeah. that is my thought process so, yeah, so I, thank I, you so much sorry go ahead I completely agree with you that uh, you know the bias which you mentioned about like, the bandwagon bias, automation, test automation. Uh, I mean, uh, please excuse that I'm using test automation. I know that you do not, <laughs> you do not like calling uh, or you do, you do not like calling automated checks as automated tests. But I am basically. No, 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 no. It's good that you set the premise. <laughs> good that you set 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 the context. You are allowed to talk about it. So, I completely agree with you regarding the bandwagon uh, bias because I've seen this is not just this is not just uh, a bias which is uh, existing in the leadership or senior management in organizations, but this is something which we should also be aware of uh, as you know test engineers working on the working on the, at the grassroots level testing actually testing products, right? Because if you remember. Uh, so there was one there was one um, talk by richard bradshaw in selenium conf where you know he mimicked he mimicked the he mimicked the behavior of testers when it comes to automation by you know yes. uh, drawing drawing parallel drawing parallels from how zombies basically uh, behave so yes. 
I think this is also this is also something which um, the, the bandwagon bias which you spoke about is something we also need to be aware of uh, when it comes to automation. That you know we should not blindly simply blindly adopt it because someone else is doing it. Or most more importantly, we should try to uh, understand where it can be applied, how it can be applied, and when it should be applied. That is also very important. Yeah, uh, in your very first uh, response, the very first question that I'd asked you about your journey, you mentioned the word value. And I would like to go back to that and, and add it here that you, know, you must understand what value test automation is going to bring to you. If you do not understand that, there is no point in implementing it. Just because the people are talking about things like ROI and, uh, you know, faster results or uh, or whatever. I mean, you just don't bring it without the context or, uh, or you know, situations when it doesn't make sense. So, so thank you for that one. Now, coming to the second misconception that that you spoke about, and uh, you know, going back to that again about ownership of testing. Now, my question is, quality is everybody's responsibility. It is said everywhere. It is written so many times. You right. see it as the as the final. Uh, quote on many PowerPoint presentations that are made. My question is how? How do you make sure that quality is everybody's responsibility? How do you right. do that? I think um, I'm going to answer this based on the experiences, the, the, the recent experiences that I have gained and also some of the things which I actually read and uh, watched. So now, since I'm working with Carousel right now, uh, this is one of the things that we are actually trying to, you know, follow religiously, wherein the test engineers are some uh, test engineers are, are someone who do not own quality end to end. It's basically the entire team's responsibility. But now, if I'm saying is the entire team's responsibility, how does it actually happen, right? So, yeah, one of the ways that it actually can happen is, uh, again, we might have heard of terms like you know shift left testing wherein uh, you you basically ensure that your testing actually starts from the uh, very first uh, stage of your product feature uh, like you know requirement analysis and design so yeah. that is one thing uh, that is one way of ensuring that quality uh, should be everyone's responsibility another thing is that um, the test engineer's role needs to be uh, different. It, it shouldn't be a role where test engineers are going to um, simply come up with test cases, execute the test cases, uh, raise bugs, and uh, yeah. you know write the tests. And uh, everyone else in the team is going to uh, basically take care of their own responsibilities only. So uh, for example, how it happens in Carousel is that everyone is involved in the entire process of testing. It's not just the test engineer. So the test engineers um, basically are, you know, quality coaches over here. So we basically guide the entire team in ensuring that, you know, uh, helping the helping the team uh, test better, coming with different processes and different uh, uh, techniques for uh, building product with a better quality rather than rather than taking the entire responsibility of, you know, ensuring that uh, the tests have been written and executed and then you know defects have been raised so there is something called as uh, uh, dog fooding so dog fooding is uh, basically a process where you involve uh, people from different uh, stakeholder different uh, business functions in the company so this is also something which I believe can also definitely help in yeah. making sure that uh, quality is everyone's responsibility instead of just expecting the testers to ensure uh, okay. the quality. That's what I feel. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I mean you, you mentioned some very good uh, points and I'm glad that you spoke about, you know, testers being quality coaches and, 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 and helping the team understand uh, Again, the value of of, 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 of of the quality that needs to be baked into the product and at, at every level and, and involving 
you know people from different uh, teams or different departments or whatever we might want to call it and making sure that they understand what is going on when we talk about testing i mean and, yeah. and this is irrespective of 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 whether you know you are testing with tools you are testing without tools it doesn't matter people need to understand that that when we talk about testing it is not just that dedicated testing team which is responsible for for doing it i mean a lot of people say oh you know agile scrum uh, if they talk about it uh, there is no role of a tester and it's one development team and they just leave it at that okay <laughs> you know you go beyond that okay what are you supposed to do i mean how are you going to implement that okay now that brings me to another question which is uh, kind of leading to the third misconception that you that you mentioned uh, testing at different uh, you know trying to understand that okay ui automation is not the only thing or it's not the end of the world okay there is you need to understand the architecture well you need to understand that uh, that you can apply automation at different layers uh, so that is one of the things that you spoke about and i completely agree with that how do you see uh, or, or or how do you think testers can actually deal with that kind of a, a challenge that kind of a misconception that you know a, a predominant amount of focus is 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 given on ui tests is it something because of the testing pyramid do you see that problem or is it something else uh actually the testing pyramid is something which uh which tells you not to focus too much on the ui so right. i would definitely uh, recommend everyone to know and try to understand what the testing pyramid is but uh, what i feel is that as a as a testing community we should also uh, try to involve uh, topics and uh, you know uh, learnings which help a tester understand what all different ways they can uh, perform testing beyond the user interface so another thing which i feel is that this is also because of our obsession with tools yeah so if you are too obsessed with certain tools uh that is not going to be uh, good in my opinion as in try to think of testing as a problem to solve rather than a rather than thinking of how, what tool am i going to actually use to do this because unless and until we think that and unless and until we think of testing as a problem to solve we are always going to be focused too much around the tool set yes. and the problem and the problem with tool set is that Uh, unfortunately um, the ui uh, te ui testing tools or the ui test automation tools have been uh, kind of you know being glorified a lot uh, in the testing community this is what i feel yeah one of the ways to you know get past that stage would be as as in you know being being someone who organizes Uh, different meetups and you know uh, community uh, discussions i feel that it's upon us as well to kind of in involve those people who also will help us to you know educate the other testers about how testing can be how testing can be looked at as a problem beyond the ui so that's what i feel well uh, and, and do you think uh, involving non testers to such discussions would also help for example uh, did you think uh, sorry and do you think involving non testers uh, in in such discussions would also help for example leadership uh, yes definitely well and that is the reason why i would recommend a lot of leadership people watching this episode to join the test chat group <laughs> that, that is what i was getting to <laughs> well so you know it, it, it never hurts i just want to add one point to it so i i do not want to say that you know we should not be um, doing ui tests at all because it is quite important to have uh, end to end tests being covered from the ui 
because that is where that that is where you actually perform the entire integration of different uh, layers in the product architecture and that is uh, important but that is not everything so that's what i feel that is that is absolutely correct and 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 uh, you know a lot of people talk about okay how do i get into doing in sprint automation okay first of all first of all first step is okay how do i get in in sprint testing going okay that's one question then they then if that is not the question then they say okay how do i get into in sprint automation should i have another sprint for automation altogether i am talking in scrum context let me let me just clarify uh, you know i like to be very specific <laughs> as far as this is concerned okay now the next next thing is when we have spoken about in sprint automation we seldom speak about testing at the right layer and when i say testing at the right layer people quite often talk about ui and they at the most they will talk about api okay now this is this is the new trend that we have seen okay you say okay if, if, if you have to look beyond ui for testing like you said okay then people will say yeah we are looking at the api what else do you want us to do hmm. okay so you get this kind of, you get these kind of responses how do you deal with that how do you deal with that well um, one way one way i would deal with that is basically you know just try to uh, share things that can help them understand how to look at uh, testing beyond like even even beyond api tests right so uh, there are a lot of different uh, checkpoints in the entire product um, or the system architecture where you can involve uh, testing even not ui not even ui not even apis so for example uh, like let's say if i'm talking about the non functional non functional testing types as well right so that is something yeah. which that is something which is a which again is a completely different uh, uh, independent independent uh, area of testing which which kind of you know is not really um, is not really considered high priority or severity unless an incident happens right right yeah like things like security and performance testing are kind of you they always take a back seat uh, uh, and have less priority unless and until an actual incident happens so yes. Yes. so this is again one kind of testing which is usually ignored and uh, functional testing is always take uh, you know it takes higher priority apart from that i think um, the other areas of as in um, other areas where testing can also be applied you know like there is a there is a there is a rising rising uh, adoption of different techniques that have that are getting adopted for testing in production so right. yes. now by testing in production i do not mean testing your ui on production i mean testing the product in production that's what you mean I, right <laughs> so i mean uh, applying different applying different uh, techniques you know like uh, monitoring observability ab uh, testing ab testing then there is also concept of there is also concept of production shadowing wherein you basically split uh, you basically um, uh, get some traffic production traffic uh, into your uh, into your uh, internal systems and test them for uh, you know a different use cases so yes. split testing. Split yes. testing could be yes that's yes. right so again this is something which uh, falls under the uh, you know one of the things that i would share with someone who thinks that okay so if not on the ui maybe i'll test on the api no there is much more beyond uh, testing on the uh, api as well and these are the things which are actually uh, useful I, i i think that's a very interesting response because you know uh, a lot of people generally talk about things like uh, production monitoring or ab testing uh, or or production shadowing uh, typically in the context of devops okay which is the the, the big animal the big beast out there right now uh, okay now 
for you to shed light on that from a test automation perspective is, is really interesting. And uh, I, I really applaud you for that because this is something that people need to understand. Okay, that whether you do DevOps or not, whether you have the DevOps culture in your organization or not. Okay, if you want to get your automation right, then you have to just look beyond doing shift left. And in fact, I must uh, talk about this. Yesterday, there was a very good discussion, uh, uh, you know, in the Agile uh, Network India Gurkhaw chapter, there was a panel discussion that happened. And one of the questions there, which I had put forth was, uh, is Agile limited to shift left? And we had some very, very good answers to that. And in my opinion, my, in my personal opinion, a lot of people talk about shift left and they just leave it there. What about mm -hmm. shift right? When you have yeah. to do production testing. Uh, when you have to do, when you, you know, you, you only realize, oh my God, I should have tested this in production. When you get a bug, when you say a customer is not happy with the performance or there is a security issue that happens or, you know, some big feature which is, which is supposed to be business critical, okay, fails in production. Or, you know, in case of healthcare system, if, if, if a patient dies, mm -hmm. then, then, you know, it could be as critical as that. Mm -hmm. You know, it could, bugs have led to the death of, of, of patients. Yes, yes. Be very, right? So, so, we are not talking about, uh, you know, just the UI. We are talking about the entire system and there is a huge gamut of things which can be tested using automation. I mean, I, I, I have on multiple locations spoken about different use cases for automation just outside of uh, you know test case execution you know for building test data or for building or generating re reports you know doing visualization and a lot of other stuff but these are these are very good cases and and for everybody who's listening to this talk please understand that shift right is also a good case for test automation so if you have still not thought about it, give it some thought because Avijit also agrees on that. Okay. So on that note, I want to move to another uh, interesting observation. And this comes at the back of uh, something that you did for, for the test chat group a few weeks ago. Is testers being able to help developers in doing unit testing? Hmm. Now I know that I know and, and people who have, who have seen the test chat episode would know that you've also been doing some unit testing. Hmm. How did that come out? Isn't unit testing a developer's thing? Uh, primarily, it is looked at as a developer's thing, but uh, the picture, I believe, is about to change uh, soon. Yeah. The reason, be the reason being, I think uh, a lot of us in the testing community are, you know, sharing their experiences and. Uh, helping others understand uh, how this picture can change. Mm -hmm. uh, how this picture is changing right now, I will just give an example of how it's changing. So, for example, the, the thing that we are doing uh, in our in my current organization is we are trying to uh, trying to basically build some metrics around uh, unit testing. Okay. So, being, uh, being part of the uh, test engineering uh, function, what we are doing is we are helping the developers so yeah they are writing the unit tests for sure so but what we are doing as, as in the way we are contributing towards the unit testing is we are building uh, metrics around uh, the unit tests now what kind of metrics one one of them being code coverage uh, and uh, also trying to understand so like since there are multiple uh, the back end in the current organization is based on microservices different teams own different microservices so uh, trying to build some metrics uh, visualize the metrics based on the code coverage which will help us understand which areas of the micro uh, microservice uh, system need tests which areas of micro uh, services system which have uh, lower coverage of tests and try to compare that with the um, with the critical issues that are being found uh, on production so things like these are some of the areas that test engineers or testers can uh, contribute to right and uh, apart from that what we are also 
doing this is probably something which uh, might not be uh, a good uh, not 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 exactly good but might not be uh, something which is done uh, everywhere but what we are trying to do is we are also trying to suggest and you know recommend best practices uh, for developing unit tests and uh, how they can be structured how how they can be made more reusable and more uh, easily maintainable like you know for example in the talk which i gave in selenium conf regarding like, treating your uh, end to end tests as uh, production code right so yeah. similarly on, on similar lines uh, unit tests test code unit test test code should also be treated as as good as your production code you basically have it maintainable have it readable because the other person who is going to work on the unit tests should be able to understand what the unit tests are doing right Absolutely. so that is the second uh, area where test engineers can also uh, uh, help or contribute towards unit testing and the third area is again basically uh, writing unit tests for your test automation framework oh yeah yeah so uh, it's a good question for, uh, for probably the audience how many um, testers who are into writing test frameworks and all actually write unit tests that is a very good question for them and if they are not doing it they should probably think about it and say oh here we have a case of doing unit testing and it is not just a developers thing this is somewhere the testers can also uh, contribute now, yeah, no, sorry, I probably need to come back to this point again because I feel this is something which is uh, very useful for everyone. As in, you need not you need not even you know build a metrics for unit test. You need not come up with code coverage uh, tooling or any, do any of that and do any of that sort. Yeah. The the only the only thing that you probably can start with is just you know have conversations with your devs. Is what kind of unit testing are you doing? How are the tests being written? Uh, are the tests actually being, you know, uh, triggered as part of the you know, delivery cycle? When are they, when are they triggered? Are they triggered um, during your continuous integration? Are there any kind of bugs being found from the unit tests or not? Even if we have these conversations, right? That means that will show that we as testers, as our test engineers, we care much more beyond you know just simply writing test cases and executing them absolutely absolutely yeah. well i think I, I think that's a that 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 is a very good point made and again i mean uh, you know testers if you're watching this testers if you are uh, you know doing work on automation pay attention to this point you will see a significant improvement in the quality of the framework that you're building, in the quality of the tests that you are writing, because this is a, a simple tip coming from a pro. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Okay. Now, uh, now there's something interesting that I wanted to talk about. In a recent conversation um, in the test chat group, uh, you emphasized on the need of, or, or rather, the, the 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 advantage of of having a portfolio for a tester mm. right you 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 emphasized on that point could you would you want to elaborate it and show us something as to what it looks like i will make you a presenter so that in case if you want to show something then uh, you can go ahead and show uh, let me do that really quickly yeah you should yeah Okay. So yeah, so if you want to elaborate a little more on 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 what do you mean by testers having a portfolio and how to do stuff like that. Uh, okay, yeah. So basically, um, the point which I had discussed in the test chat community group uh, regarding the portfolio for test chat, okay. So I feel, I mean, typically uh, portfolios have been an area which uh, product designers uh, usually uh, come up with like if you look at if you look at product designers or designers in general like or people from the um, uh, arts or design function 
or even let's say fashion so uh, when we think of portfolio as you always think that okay portfolio is something which is required for you know um, professionals who are coming from a fashion or a designing or even from a development background like if you will see that a lot of them a lot of a lot of um, developers have their uh, portfolios like for example you will see web 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 developers uh, mobile developers they have a portfolio where they showcase uh, different applications that they build um, they showcase their uh, various uh, concepts that they worked on okay but does that mean that testers cannot have uh, portfolios i think it would be a good probably a good thing to start uh, for us you know in the testing community to start building our own, own portfolios wherein we'll be able to showcase uh, what we have worked on uh, we'll also be able to showcase uh, some of the like for example some of the tools that we are working on uh, some of the uh, blogs or the conferences or the meetups that we have attended or even like let's say if you are a speaker or if you are someone who is contributing to uh, different testing communities you can showcase all the different um, artifacts or the different content that you have been uh, providing to these different communities as part of the portfolio so i think it's quite important uh, for us to take that step as a testing community uh, because because i think um, a lot of us will have this question i am a tester what do i really have to show to everyone because at i cannot showcase the different designs like what designers come up with i cannot showcase the different applications uh, that developers have built so what am i actually going to show but there is de there is definitely a lot that you can actually include as part of your uh, online portfolio and uh, i personally also i am still in the process of building my portfolio online uh, now that does that mean that you need to have a separate or independent portfolio of your own like for example a website maybe not maybe yes it's up completely up to you like for example linkedin um, is also one way one way of you know developing a portfolio where you do not need to maintain a separate website but um, like i personally feel that it's always a good uh, a good learning experience as well wherein if you if you if you develop your own portfolio website you are also going to learn a lot in the journey so yeah like are you able to see my screen right now yes 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 very so much. this is just this is just a very basic uh, website that i have hosted on my own github pages it's not at all um, the complete one and i am still working on my own portfolio uh, website but basically what i intend to do uh, in the end is include a lot of different topics that i have been working on like things like what type of what type of industries that i have contributed to like you know uh, like there are two industries that i have contributed to when it comes to testing healthcare and uh, uh, e-commerce right. so i can i can include that as part of my portfolio then i can also include the kind of tools that i know the kind of skills that i have gained as part of my portfolio another thing which i plan to do uh, is basically uh, include uh, blogging also as part of my website like currently i write some blogs on medium but uh, i might probably think of migrating them to my own uh, blog and another thing is that uh, also including you know links to websites uh, sorry links to the uh, different different uh, conferences and meetups that i have spoken at and also the slides so this is just this is was just one example that i want to give uh, how testers can actually you know build their credibility uh, online and also like you know help themselves uh, showcase their showcase their uh, skills and uh, their capabilities another example which i actually want you know since i have got this chance to speak about uh, online portfolio right uh, do you know uh, gaurav singh yes so um, 
so gaurav singh is basically a test engineer from gojek and he also gave um, a talk recently in selenium conf on uh, different principles and patterns for developing test framework and uh, this is one definite this is definitely one awesome example that i would like to share with everyone who is watching this on how you can build a portfolio as a tester or test engineer so this is basically his website automationhacks.io and uh, the way that he has categorized his uh, website is uh, really cool and something which i definitely look up to and basically apart from apart from uh, you know contributing to like uh, contributing in the form of speaking at different conferences he also blogs a lot and he blogs yeah. a lot on his experiences and the things that he has worked on so i feel this is a really nice way of uh, building your own uh, portfolio and your uh, credibility as a tester this is really cool this is really cool uh, i have i have had the pleasure of listening to gora a couple of times and reading some of the stuff that he writes so this is this is pretty neat and uh, i have also checked out your uh, work in progress uh, you know uh, portfolio pretty impressed so far uh, you know your blogs on medium pretty effective well by the way uh, for the audience i'm going to share all of that as links in the description of this video that will include abhijit's uh, portfolio if you want to go check out what he's been doing a uh, link to his uh, his medium blogs um, i hope it will lead me to one single link otherwise you can share it with me abhijit yeah. where uh, which can point people out to uh, different uh, posts that you've written so far and also gorov's uh, Okay. Automation hacks uh, page which you just showed. I think this is this is absolutely awesome stuff. Okay, and and this is where I also feel a great value in having a, a tester having uh, his own portfolio. I hadn't thought about it this far, and only after you spoke, I was inspired to do it. So thank you so much. Uh, I have slowly started of thinking of of ways to do it. You know, building my own. Uh, little not i will not call it website you know at least some some sort of a repository if i may yeah. say of, of, of the you little can, work i've done sorry go ahead you can consider it as you know side project of our own like something to yeah. work on during our nine to five right so yes something Absolutely. something to you know uh, tinker with and you know build our creativity as well absolutely 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 i agree now um now we are we're going to talk about some fun stuff and uh, for for a bit before i wrap this up i know uh, it's i think it's 2 pm right now in singapore already so in yeah. so um what something that i just noticed in 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 your uh, little github page and something that that your fans also talk about okay What is the story of red T-shirt? Your second skin. <laughs> this this is a story really. I mean, this is basically just a, this is basically just a really good headshot that was taken of me in my in my current organization carousel, and I really like that one, and that is why uh, I basically use that one everywhere. That's so. We Yeah, so most 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 of the time when you um, talk about a Vicky, you talk about this guy in that red T-shirt, that cool guy doing some really awesome stuff in that red T-shirt. That's how that's how we relate to it. So you know, like I said, uh, one of your fans just pointed out that it may just be your second skin. Okay, so you you have a fan following, by the way. Let me just tell you that. Okay, in case you are not aware, and 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 I am. in that fan club of of the many fans that you have so you know so there is there is obviously a lot of stuff to learn from now um, before i let you go i want to know from you what does abhijit do when he is not doing all these cool stuff okay so testing? uh i actually like to read a lot but uh, to be honest i 
haven't been reading um i have I haven't been reading beyond uh tech for a long time and this is something which i am guilty of because i feel that um you know if you like reading then you should definitely try to explore um topics beyond beyond the one which you where which your career is associated with but yeah i mean this is something which i like to do a lot right now i like to read a lot on tech uh and also apart from that i actually am quite uh, a music person so i like to play uh, my synthesizer uh, which i have at home i'm not a, i'm not a learned uh, uh, person but just a hobby of mine well so so we get to add another band member <laughs> that i have been speaking about uh, in some of the some of the test speak episodes that we've been having so we we identified singers okay we we identified people who can play the guitar now you can play the synthesizer and slowly the band is building up so yeah and 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 all of and all of these four people are part of the test chat community so we can have a te- test chat band some day and we can have a performance of some sort uh, that would be fun to have <laughs> Well, that, that that was absolutely awesome uh, talking to you today, Abhijit. Some really cool uh, stuff you've shared. Uh, very very pragmatic thoughts about test automation, uh, about the misconceptions. Uh, there has been a lot of learning for me. The, the learning has been continuous. I have uh, known you for more than three years now, and it has been a wonderful association. I have uh, had lots to learn from you from your from your posts from your responses uh, you know from some of the cool stuff that that you have been doing uh, your 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 presentation on 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 unit testing the the other day i will put a link to that video also in the link uh, in the description of of this video so in case you guys want to check out that cool webinar that uh, we created for the test chat group a few weeks ago you can go check it out um, and, and you know so thank you so much abhiji for your time today it, it was indeed a pleasure to host you yeah it was it was my pleasure as well and i feel really honored for to be here in the first place i mean i cannot imagine uh, probably you know to be uh, interviewed by you <laughs> in the first place it was a definitely a big honor uh, for me to actually uh, talk to you as a test a test chat speaker so yeah I, I i hope i'm not scary <laughs> because, because the impression that, that i'm getting from a lot of people is that you know i have this big guy which i'm not <laughs> i mean i definitely want to i definitely want to say that uh, you are doing a really fantastic job with the test chat i i mean i i just happened to you know see see a link on linkedin uh, about the invitation to the whatsapp group which we had first and Uh, I joined it and then I found that the uh, entire group is so so active and talking on such important topics related to testing, which which I have not seen happening at all in other communities so far. So this is something really you know uh, worth learning from when it comes to community building. So thanks for that, Brijesh. And uh, like before we end, I just want to say one thing uh, regarding you know uh, the first. uh the very first section which you spoke about the career uh, path of testers right i just have one suggestion like uh, whoever is looking uh, this video later is uh, if you are if you are someone who is just starting their career in software testing right uh, please try to uh, get into a startup instead of getting into a you know well established mnc i cannot i cannot emphasize enough uh, how amazing your experience is going to be how how many a number of things that you are going to learn um, in your entire journey of working for startups so the one of the best decisions that i actually took in my career uh, when i started it was uh, working for startups and uh, that is something which i definitely want to you know share with every tester who is watching this video like of course there are definitely you know uh, the uh, risks coming from you know 
we we tend to think of you know when it comes to working for startups we tend to tend to think of uh, you know whether it is going to be risky for me in terms of job uh, stability security etc etc but if it's possible for you then definitely try to go for uh, working for startups because you learn a lot in the process definitely there is there is a lot of room for experimentation and as a tester uh, testing is all about experimenting right so if you do not experiment how will you learn okay there will be failures it's it's okay and that's that's how we all learn right we 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 never started walking at the first place just just you know we crawl and we get up and we walk no it never happened we stumbled a few times and we started walk and that's that's exactly how our career also shapes up so i think that is a very good tip again from you abhijit thank you so much for sharing it uh, i i am sure that those who are watching will will learn a lot thank you for that that shout out for for the test chat i am uh, you know just just an enabler trying to help people stay connected uh, you know talk about testing talk about other subjects uh, you know talk about uh, life in general okay there are a lot of life lessons to be had from each other okay um, now a lot of people do not know we started talking about it we started talking about various subjects one of the subjects that 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 really is hot these days is people talking about mythology because uh, mythology has a very good connection with uh, leadership and aspects like that and that was very very well established by ramit in one of the recent presentations that he did in one of the conferences and that has led to the creation of a mythology group or telegram where uh, by by some of the test chat members and, and there is there is a considerable amount of traction that goes on in that group with people talking about so many issues and you get to learn so much you know yeah. not just test but outside of it and and it is so incredible to see that you know testers apart from doing what they do for for a living they also have these kind of interests where they want to read about their culture about about mythology about things like that this is just an example apart from that you know people also talk about tech stuff and 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 they have interest in areas like sociology or or politics and people are talking about these subjects also which is which is quite interesting and that's how we all learn we all grow so 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 i i just enabled something and out of it some other things have been born uh um, yesterday we got a message from one of our uh, uh, you know group mates who started an initiative just like test chat a smaller community he started in ahmedabad you know yeah. that that was so heartening sailesh i think i think it was sailesh who who sent yeah. that message it was so heartening i i felt so happy and i feel so proud that you know uh, people are taking it further people are taking the initiative of forming groups and and starting to talk about things they are learning they are taking a clue out of this and this is exactly what i wanted wanted to happen and yeah. to see that things are happening like this is really a dream come true for me and thank you so much uh, abhijit you are there sham is there from you know you are you are very good friend our very very good friend uh, you know you guys are doing a lot for the community thank you so much for being a part of the test chat group and adding so much uh, insightful information so much value i mean it is incredible so all in all a big thank you from my side and uh, you know uh, please take care stay safe uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of your sunday have fun <laughs> and yeah, uh, hope you. to see that uh, red t-shirt in one of the meetups soon <laughs> yes i definitely do that <laughs> <laughs> all right see you buddy thank you thanks a lot rajesh